Hey, welcome back. We're back out here at the boat today, and we're going to be disassembling these masts in order to get them ready for transport with the boat to the new location. So I'm not really sure which of these two masts is the original mast for the boat. I think in a lot of pictures I've seen this more bronzy colored one, but I'm not sure. The, uh, the more silvery aluminum one seems like it would fit more with common masts, but I don't know. The bronzy color might be fitting for more of a 1960s boat. Maybe that's what they looked like back then. So I'm not sure where I'm gonna start on either one of these. I suppose I'll start with the more bronze colored one, uh, just cause it's more in the shade. And as always, it's hot today. I think I'll just start from one end and kinda move my way down. Uh, maybe start with the running rigging and trying to get that off since I'm gonna be throwing all of that away and then focus more on the standing rigging after that. Also because, you know, the standing rigging is more of a permanent fixture and it'll be a little more finicky to get off. Okay, let's see what we can do. Cut, start by cutting off some of the tape off here or just pulling it off. This will try not to scratch the mask any more than it already is. Wow, even this tape is just old. It's more like, more like goop in a very specific form. I almost feel like I should be wearing a respirator around these old lines. Yeah, probably gonna be heavy editing in this one. Oh, look at that, I'm shaking the camera all the hell too. Well, that's not gonna make for very good footage, is it? Okay, and we're back to holding the camera. So in addition to some audio equipment in the form of a microphone, I should probably invest in a taller or just invest in a tripod. So uh, we're going to be having clips checking in and out with my progress here because I don't have a stable place to set the camera unless you want the footage to be like this. So I'll get these lines off of here and check back in. Okay, so that's it. One mast done, the old bronze mast, all de-rigged and ready to go. Uh, I'm going to get the other one done tomorrow and get them both loaded up back on top of the boat. Uh, I took everything off except for the main and jib halyards, obviously. Uh, they do need to be redone. Um, these wires, you can see they're a bit corroded and kinked up in places. I mean, there's no actual kinks, but... You know, stuff like that. I mean, there's just a bit of warp to it. Um, but yeah, I left the halyards, so when we go to replace those, we can just string up the new line to the old one and pull it through. Because for anybody who's ever had to redo a halyard in a mast, it is no fun job. So, that's it. That's all that's left on this thing. I remembered to go back and take a bunch of pictures, and even went through and videoed both masts to make sure I can get them back together. Um you know, the way they were. So that's it for now. One last thing before I close up shop, I did get all of the stay wires all nicely bundled up after I took them off, tied up with electrical tape and old pieces of rigging, you know, I got in here that I'm saving for future purposes. Okay, day two of tearing apart the mass. I actually did manage to get a little bit of progress on the silver mast here um, last night before I called it quits. So not much work left to do, the bronze mask we'll call it. Got that all 
the uh, halyards all taped up and everything. Boom's all ready to go. So that one's ready to go. Get these stays off this one. They're pretty tight on these spars up here. I think I just gotta pull them off and then should be good to go. Um, and then the plan is I got a big old tarp, bought one, try and wrap them up in that and then get them on the boat to move. Looking good, we're definitely getting there. I mean, really, it's just these two stays left now. Get them off them spars. Get those, um, not rivets, but pins out of there. Secure these halyards and she'll be ready to go. Okay, so the guy wires lifted off um, pretty easily off these little spars. These are just, um, you know, little engineered threaded bolts that just sit inside these spars. So I think what we're gonna do is just put a piece of electrical tape around each one to keep them from falling out and then remove the spars. Take these pins out and remove the spars, but tape them to keep it together. For anyone who's ever had to take a cotter pin out, they know that they're not in for the most fun time. Luckily these on these spars here are in a nice spot, very accessible. On the top of the stays here, however, this is how they were at the bottom as well, and that's not a fun place. To try and film or get into. For those of you that don't know, a pair of needle nose is preferably in better condition than mine. It's going to be your best friend for this task. And the idea to get them out is the same way they went in. There we go. That should pull out now. Being rusty actually kind of made it easier. There. Tape together. Stay together. And of course, having two hands free made the second one even easier. Okay, we got her clamped down to keep her upright, make this a little easier on me. And I forgot when I mentioned I had taken the stays off the bottom before, I was thinking of the four stay. I forgot that I had not taken the bottom off the side stays yet. So we got four tricky cotter pins to take out. Let's see what we can do. Okay, I think now you should be able to see a little bit better in there. Maybe what we're working with. Maybe not. So, let's see what I can do to try and film at least getting one of these suckers out. Remember from before, 
I had to do a lot of holding the pin from spinning with one hand. While I bent the ends off. I'm sorry, it's probably going to be a pretty shaky camera here for this, but who knows if you can even see. I'm going to try and grab this tab, hold it on the other side, and bend it. Up, oh, oh, no, I just, the end of it broke right off. Well, this might be easier if we just try and break it out. The cotter pin, that is. Oh, wow, the other side just broke off. Okay. This might be a lot easier than I, it usually is because of how rusted this cotter pin is. Well, folks, I tried. So disappointing on the very last thing to take off the mast. Just this last side stay. Can't get that cotter pin out in there. And both ends of this cotter pin have broken off on me. So there's just little nubs on either side left in there now. And I can't get it out, at least not with the cheap needle or really old haggard needle nose that I have. But that's okay. I'll just secure it good to the mast and it'll be fine. I got most of the stuff that I need to get off off of here, so move on to wrapping up. Okay, so just now figuring out that there's not actually any halyards run through the center of this mast. Like, I don't know, at least... I recognize sailboats are supposed to have. Perhaps this mast is of a different design where it doesn't run through the middle. Uh, but yeah, I th what I thought was a jib and a mainsail halyard is just a single halyard through the top of the mast here. I don't know what's going on with that. So oh, I'm just gonna yank this all the way out since it doesn't actually go through the center of the mast. And that would be the only reason to leave the halyards in there in this condition like I did with the bronze mast so I don't know and I keep calling it a bronze mast it's definitely not made of bronze but it is bronze colored so that's why you know after looking at these masts and working on them a bit the question is starting to come up uh, are these even original masts to this boat or not I mean there is a placard on this one that says with the Ian Proctor Metal Master, Southampton, made in England. So, I'm gonna guess that that's not the original mast. This one doesn't have any information on it, but uh, also questionable. So now I'm just gonna go give them each a good once over, make sure there's nothing that's just gonna fall off and transport. Make sure everything is that's dangling is permanently affixed. And yeah, then get them wrapped up in the tarp. 